On today's show, our top 32 at Elite Prospects is finally out. We'll be looking at the uh, entire rankings, top 32 and honorable mentions on today's episode of Locked On NHL Prospects. You are Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to Locked On NHL Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. On this podcast, we break down everything prospects related for you five days a week, Monday to Friday. I'm Hattie Kalakesh, QMJHL and crossover scout for Elite Prospects with Sebastian High, uh, USHL and crossover scout for Elite Prospects. And on today's show, we'll be breaking down the Elite Prospects Top 32, which just came out uh, yesterday as of recording this. Uh, we're going to be breaking down the entire Top 32 and under honorable mention. So we have 44 prospects to talk about today. Um, we'll try to keep it short and sweet on all of these and just give you the rundown um before i get into any of that though today's episode is brought to you by fanduel make every moment more right now new customers can get up to 150 dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar money line bet that's 150 bucks if your team wins so visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started if you're watching on youtube as usual remember to like and subscribe let us know in the comments what you think of the episode what you thought of the rankings and if you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform please leave us a rating review and make sure to make us your first listen of the day let's get started right away here at number one and it's james Hagens, and i think the the reason for that is despite the fact that the next four or five guys on the list have been doing fairly well, James Hagen hasn't hadn't played yet as recording the rankings himself. So we can't really fault him or push him down until we see him play this season. And he's playing for Boston College and he will be playing in the top six for them next to guys like, um, you know, next to the guys that they have, you know, uh, Ryan Leonard and those types of guys. So he's in a great position. And to sum up his game, He's average size, about 5'10 and a half, 5'11. Um, I'd say even a bit undersized, but he is so 168, dynamic. too. 168 is an issue. Uh, but overall, the rest of his game is fantastic. Dynamic, skillful, fast, incredibly good handler, shooter, and passer. Really, really, really smart transition player as well. Um, he's got some Jack Hughes-esque flash, flashes to his game. Uh, so I think that in this draft that type of profile can still end up on top despite the next uh, three, four guys being absolutely fantastic as well. Um, at number two, we land on Roger McQueen, who's been amazing as well. Six foot five center from the WHL playing for the Brandon Wheat Kings has been kind of putting up an insane numbers to start off the year for a guy that's six foot five, like him to have the handling and shooting that he has is just amazing. Right? Absolutely it is. And like, as you mentioned, he's massive, he's physical, but he's also highly intelligent. He's creative with the puck on a stick. He's as good a puck handler as James Hagens is at his big frame. He's a really dynamic goal scorer, really good playmaker. He's a do-it-all offensive piece with also pretty solid defensive work rate and, uh, and efficiency there too. Uh, the skating, the fluidity, and everything he does is also impressive for a guy that's over six foot five. And uh, yeah, he's a fantastic prospect. But there's definitely a big debate between him and Michael Misa, as we talked about in yesterday's episode. And Misa has been off to a flying start in Saginaw, whereas uh, whereas McQueen has started off the season with eight goals and eleven points in six games. Misa has ten goals and twelve points in five games. So one upping is uh, his competitor there, and he's an elite level skater, uh, dynamic with the puck on his stick, highly creative, incredibly pacey. Uh, he's definitely like gotten a lot more solid on his skates and also grown in terms of height uh, since entering the OHL. He's now just under uh, six foot one and he's 185 pounds. Uh, yeah. And as a dynamic left shot centerman, he brings just about everything that you want. And he's so well-rounded, but not well-rounded as in like master of none. He's master of many different things already. Yeah. And uh, he's certainly showing why he was the first exceptional status player in the O in a couple of years. Absolutely. Then we move on to Matthew Schaefer at fourth overall. Matt Schaefer was absolutely fantastic at the Holinka Gretzky Cup at the U18 Worlds a couple of months ago. Um, every international tournament I've watched him at, he's been absolutely mesmerizing. His OHL tape wasn't as great, but he was playing in a bit more of a muted role. Um, and overall, you know, since the start of the year, we haven't really gotten to watch him because he has mono, but the international performances were good enough to push him. In my opinion, if we were basing ourselves just off that, he could have been at number two here on this list. He's fantastic. Great rush defender, great skater, um, active offensively. He pushes into the offensive zone. Everyone is trying to find him on the ice at the Helenka Gretzky Cup, especially. He was the key focal point of that team. And he's a September birthday, an early September birthday. So we're talking about 
probably the youngest prospect in this first round, I think. Um, and he's very, very, very mature for his age, leadership abilities. He's got it all. And then at number five to round out, I'd say a tier here um, in this top five. There's a clear top five Definitely. at this point. Porter Martone of the Brampton Steelheads. He's a six foot two, six foot three uh, winger slash center. I see more of a winger at the next level. Um, incredibly smart, incredibly good scorer and passer and playmaker and, and play driver overall. The only real thing missing from his game is pace. Um, you know, if, if he starts improving the, the speed at which he makes plays, uh, his ability to manipulate his speed as well, to slow down, accelerate that kind of stuff, he'll be a lot more effective, but the toolkit is mesmerizing. He reminds me a lot of a Corey Perry style of player, very violent, very aggressive. There's so much to work with here. Uh, and then at number six, we have Malcolm Spence. Um, what's your takeaway on his game? Cause he's been, he's been really, really interesting to watch this season. He's really polished. That, that, that's the name of the game with Malcolm Spence. Uh, he's a really physical winger, six foot one, just over 200 pounds. One of the elder statesmen in this draft class as well as a September 06 birthday. Uh, and with Erie uh, in the past couple of seasons, he's really just been a very impactful player, shift to shift in all three zones. Um, I, there's like plus level shooting, plus level playmaking, plus level puck handling, plus level sense. Everything across the board is just like above average. Um, he's not going to wow you as much with his dynamism as like the clear top five guys will. And uh, I think there's definitely a couple other guys uh, between here, like seven and 15 that have more upside in terms of, of raw projection and more dynamic skill. But Spence is, uh, is certainly a player that uh, will go high on draft day and uh, already plays the game in a really like high paced style that will translate seamlessly to the pro level. Absolutely. Then we move on to number seven. We have Jackson Smith, the six foot three uh, left shot defenseman uh, who's been playing for the Tri City Americans in the WHL. He's off to a great start, four assists in four games on the season. He put up half a point a game last year. Incredible, incredible skater. And, and at his size, it's really impressive to watch. But he's also above average across the board, skill set wise. He's a good passer. He's a decent shooter. Um, really smart handler as well. There are moments where he'll, he'll spin off pressure into the middle, uh, kind of access the neutral zone, make a backhand pass through pressure. There are flashes of skill in there that are really interesting. I don't like his decision making as much as the rest of our team at EP. And that might have been a bit high for me. There are a couple of defensemen that I would have taken higher, but um, Smith still has a bunch to work with. And again, at six foot three with elite, elite skating. Um, you're talking about a very interesting prospect here. And then at number eight, we have our first Swede. So if you're wondering where Anton Frondel lands, you're going to have to wait a bit. Um, Victor Eklund ends up at number eight here on our rankings. He's five and a half um 152 pounds but he have he has every single skill you look for from undersized fours in order to make it in the nhl he's a plus skater an incredibly incredibly intelligent playmaker and uh and, and decision maker he's a brother of william eckland who's currently in the nhl uh and doing pretty well with the san jose sharks and they play similar styles i would say that victor, victor eckland is a bit more uh, physically inclined, but a bit less physically gifted. So Eklund's a bit bigger, a bit stronger, but Eklund is uh, aggressive as all hell. He is very much in your face trying to make plays, and there are flashes of um, kind of body, uh, you know, body positioning tools that he uses along the boards to escape pressure against bigger opponents that should work as he climbs the ranks. Then at number nine, we have Lyndon Lakovich, a prospect that to be honest, I hadn't watched before the meeting, and I ended up watching for a couple of hours after the meeting when uh, when Mitch pushed for him in the top 10, and I'm sold. Amazing shooter, fantastic, fantastic playmaker. Um, the way that he uses trailers and uh, lookoffs and delays in order to open up passing lanes is just absolutely ridiculous, all in a six foot 490 pound frame. So there's a lot to work with here with Lyndon Lakovich. And to round out our top 10, talk to me about Braden Coots for a second here, because he he's he's among a trio of players here at 10, 11, and 12 that, are, that we're basically cutting hairs on, but he ended up on top, right? Absolutely. Uh, he, he was very much right in that mix, uh, and even in the mix with uh, Lyndon Lakovich as well uh, for that ninth overall spot. Uh, Braden Coots is incredibly physically involved despite being a hair under uh, six foot. 183 pound centerman and uh, he's been developing with the Seattle Thunderbirds which has not been the strongest team to dub so far this season by any uh, stretch but uh, he's highly intelligent incredibly pacey so middle driven uh, he plays the game like an NHLer already uh, definitely has shades of like a ramped up uh, Jet Luchanko for instance if you're looking for a stylistic comparable I think that there's more creativity in the offensive zone at the same stage in their development 
Uh, he's more physically inclined as well uh, than Luchenko was last season, but he also brings that dynamic playmaking, uh, really, really like high-end flashes of handling. The handling hasn't been like consistently elite so far, in my viewing, but the flashes have been really, really, really fantastic. And if he can bring his consistency up to that level, you're looking at a potential game-breaking puck handler. Uh, think a bit like a Grayson Souchin in terms of how he's able to leverage that in the WHL. But uh, the ne- next couple of players are ones that you've watched a bit as well, and uh, are both like really solid two-way centermen in Caleb Desnoyers at 11th overall and Ivan Ryapkin at 12. Yeah, absolutely. We'll make us quick because we got a break to take. But basically, with Caleb Dinoyer, it's all about processing hockey sense, playmaking, and versatility. He's incredibly physical. Um, he's able to play a checking role, a playmaking role. He's able to be a bit more of a finisher around the net. Incredibly versatile style. We saw it at the Holinka. We've seen it so far with Moncton. Unfortunately, he's out with an injury, an undisclosed injury. Um, and hopefully, it doesn't keep him out for long. But overall, there's a lot to work with here with NYA. And then Ivan Ryapkin, I say, is a slightly better stick handler for sure. Um, but he thinks the game at a lower level than Dinoye does, and he's a bit more, he's a bit less physically capable. Um, so that's kind of the difference between the two, but they're similar prospects in terms of their approach to the game, very meticulous, very versatile. Um, there's definitely something to work with in both cases here. Uh, and that's our first segment done. We'll continue here with uh, picks 13 through 25 in just a second. But just before, a quick word from our sponsors at FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start this season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the exact same page where you place your bets. Whether you want to take your big swings on the NFL and American football, or maybe you want to go for European football. The Champions League is now in full force, and the season has more than gotten underway. Or maybe you're more of a tennis fan or a golf fan, or if you're listening to this podcast, a hockey fan. Hockey season is beginning this week, and there's so much to get excited for. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That is at FanDuel.com. All righty, so moving on to our second segment. Here we'll be talking about picks 13 through 25 in these rankings, working way up down to um, even the bottom end of the honorable mentions. So starting off at 13, we have Cameron Schmidt, a 5'7", 156-pound left winger from the WHL who plays for the Vancouver Giants, and he's been off to a torrid start. He's up to 10 points in five games, been playing really, really well so far. Um, amazing, amazing skater. He's probably the best skater in this draft, um, uh, barring James Hagen's maybe. Um, the maybe. shot is high-end. The stick handling is elite. The hockey sense is really, really good with Cameron Schmidt. Um, but yes, he is 5'7". Uh, but he's he's lining up to be the first five foot seven prospect ever drafted in the first round. Um, that includes Cole Caulfield, who technically was 5'8 in this draft year. Um, technically. That's, that's debatable, but still, yeah. he's, he would technically be the first uh, five foot seven prospect drafted in the first round. But if anyone's going to make he's it, he's very it's... physically engaged, too. Exactly. Like, he's think incredibly like stank over in physical involvement and leverage mechanics. It's very fun. absolutely. He's got those flashes in this, in this game. He had a really poor Holinka Gretzky Cup tournament, but uh, since coming back to Vancouver, he's been absolutely dominant and nothing stopping him there. Uh, speaking of good Holinka Gretzky Cup tournaments, Blake Fiddler ends up at number 14, uh, six foot four, 210 pounds right shot defenseman i already i I can already see everyone's uh, eyes who's listening to this just go wide immediately that stands out immediately in this game but on top of that he's an amazing skater a really 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 good breakout passer but above all what makes him so special is the rush defending i've said it in the rankings meeting which should be out soon um he's the only he's the only defender in this draft class that made me utter expletives he's so good at rush defending so uh he's definitely got something to work with there um, but on top of that, there are flashes of skill, flashes of decision making and ideas that push his game forward really, really well. So he's got an interesting package. Uh, a six foot four right shot defenseman who can skate already has plus value in the NHL. Yeah, after that, the offensive uh, upside. And uh, you've got a really, really good prospect. At 15, let's talk about Anton Frondel finally. Let's do it. Uh, so, yes, he's not in the top 10. He's at 15th overall here. Talk me through why exactly that is. Absolutely. I mean, he's a really polished player. Uh, if you're looking at who would be the most effective fourth line NHL right now, he would not be at 15th overall in this draft ranking. But uh, the, the question that we have is the actual high end upside in this game. 
He's really intelligent. He has a wicked shot on like the one time on the power play is a massive threat. Uh, he's physical at yeah, six foot, 196 pounds. He's pounds. He's built like a tree stump, but he has had some injury problems, which is a little bit of, red, of a red flag for us and has a lot of pretty solid tools in his toolkit, but there's a lack of dynamic skill. Uh, stylistically is more along the lines of like a Dalibor Dvorsky than a Leo Carlson. If you're looking at uh, like draft eligibles that are playing in Sweden in recent years and, and, and how they make their impact on the game. So uh, Farnell can certainly make his way back into our top 10 this season. Uh, but from what we've seen, so far and we haven't seen any draft eligible footage of course because he's been injured uh he he falls in here at number 15 and there's definitely a conversation between him and like Ivan Ryapkin for who the, the the best center out of Europe is this year but uh for the time being we went with Ryapkin uh the next one is Logan Hensler at 16th overall a six foot 296 pound right shot defenseman who'll be playing in the NCAA this season with the University of Wisconsin. We're going to see how that development program uh, works this year with a new coaching staff. But last season with the NTDP, he played a pretty unspectacular but effective game. He's a really good skater. He's a pretty solid passer. He's uh, physically mature already. Um, we have some questions around his runway uh, in, in in both physical and, and like offensive development. Uh, because there's been a real lack of offensive dynamism and creativity in his game. Uh, he, he just he defaults to the simple play in the offensive zone time and time again, which is great for, ret for retaining possession, but he's not a creative force. And even defensively, he's solid, but not outstanding to the point of earning yeah. himself a top 10 grade at this point in the season. But we're going to see how he plays in the NCAA this year. But the next player is a massive defenseman who is highly intelligent and has some really bright defensive flashes in Redeem Mertka. Uh, what made him land at 17th on this board? I think it's the fact that usually with this profile of prospect, you know, we've seen this type of prospect before, these lower end skating, but really, really big defensemen. Um, he doesn't play like the usual type. There are some ideas that he has defensively and offensively that really show some some decent processing in this game. It's all ideas right now. He's still figuring out how to concretize those ideas with, with execution. The execution is definitely not there yet, but look off passes, um, kind of retrieval skills, those types of things that show a bit more hot. Hockey sense are definitely there in this game. So there's a chance that he develops those tools and becomes a high end kind of top four defenseman in the NHL. I think his frame should already carry him into a kind of a bit more of an insulator role given his reach, his, uh, his defensive abilities, but there's offensive skill there as well with Redeem Mertka. So overall, six foot six, 210 pound right shot defenseman. Um, with offensive upside he's in the same boat as Blake Fiddler for me there's a def there's a definite stylistic comparable there even though the separating tool there between the two is that Blake Fiddler is a fantastic skater Rudy Mertka's output is decent but the form is absolutely terrible so it depends on a lot of things on that side as we want to number 18 a prospect that um we're, we're all pretty big fan of at elite prospects uh Brady Martin we've actually named our group chat the Brady Bunch because we like him so much uh but yeah oh really skilled across the board great shot great passing great handling he's incredibly smart and incredibly physically inclined which are I think the two things that really make his game tick is the smarts and the physicality um he applies his physicality in smart ways and he applies his intelligence in physical ways uh so it's it's he's a very interesting prospect to keep a look on he's been playing with the super Greyhounds in the OHL. He's got six points in four games. He's average size at six foot 176, but he uses his physicality incredibly well. Um, then we have Kashan Aitchison. Speaking of violence, uh, he's a six foot one and a half, 200 pound left shot defenseman who's been playing for the Barry Colts in the OHL. And you don't want to go into the boards against this guy. He makes you think hey. twice about it and then exploits that at that fact. The fact that you're hesitating to go along the boards, he exploits that. He punishes players like no one I've ever seen in the OHL. Um, just cross checks, big hits, uh, always in your face, always beating you down in corners. Um, he's got a plus shot as well, heavy, heavy release from the point. Um, and he's above average in hockey sense as well. Um, great timing on his activation, moves up the ice really well. So there's a lot to work with here. Then we have our first goalie, number 20, Josh Ravensbergen. Uh, of, above average across the board on a six foot five frame. He's been. Uh, absolutely fantastic so far in two seasons with the Prince George Cooperburgers. He's got a 927 save percentage so far uh, through five games in the dub this year. And yeah, overall, just there's no real weakness. He's got great tracking. He's very, very smart, really mobile for a guy of his size, uh, covers his posts really well. I mean, nothing to criticize here with him. Uh, Six to five. 
six foot five. That's already a great start. The add to that, the skill set, and it's amazing. Then we have Jake O'Brien at 21. Talk me through his game a little bit. Yeah, he's a really good playmaker. Uh, the skating is a little bit of a tick below average, but uh, a really, really polished passer. And, uh, and and the game flows through him when he's on the ice. He's a real conductor of play. And uh, there's definitely some decent room to grow into his into his uh, toolkit and his game. Uh, so, I mean, he, last season he played a great year as well with the Brantford Bulldogs as a D-1, where he only scored 13 goals in 61 games, but he added that 51 assists to end up over a point a game with 64 points. And uh, this season has started with two goals and no assists, but expect that assist tally to ramp up very quickly. At 22 and 23, we have my first USHLers of the board. Uh, it is not the strongest USHL class in the world uh, in the past couple of seasons either, but uh, we have Carter Amico and William Moore, and you could not find two more opposite prospects from the USA pool this year. Carter Amico is a mobile and punishingly physical defenseman. He's a right shot, 225 pounds, six foot five player. And uh, yeah, he's intelligent. He's a really deft puck handler. There have been flashes of a puck carrying game that have been really, really bright. And at this point, it's all projection with him. Uh, he's still quite raw in uh, like as a player and will definitely need a couple seasons to marinate after being picked before he makes the leap to the NHL. But there is a foundation for just about everything that, that you could look for in a player of his profile so far. William Moore, on the other hand, is a highly toolsy six foot two hundred seventy five pound left shot forward. He can play at center or at left wing. Uh, he's above average in literally every single category, uh, but except for inconsistency and pace. If you're looking at the skating or the shooting, the playmaking, the physicality, the puck handling, the sense, it's all there. But he's really struggled to ramp up any gear so far this season. He floats around the ice. He does most of his work while in a glide. And uh, and there's just, just been a real lack of taking the bull by the horns with an NTDP, NTDP team that is starving for a star player to build around. And he is the guy in terms of tools that could be that. Uh, but he just ha hasn't quite uh, risen up to that level at this point. But on pure tools alone, he's probably a top 10 or top 12 guy in this pool. But uh, again, uh, there's a lot of consistency issues. So he falls in here at 23rd overall. The next two are from your region in Quebec uh, with Emile Guitti and Justin Carbonneau, two players that you have very different reads on, despite both having significant upsides in the skill department as wingers. Yeah, I think the only thing they, those two have in common is a release. Uh, both of them have, have tremendous, tremendous shots. I say Guité is, a, is an edge above, um, but Guité is also a very intelligent playmaker, processor. He's able to move plays east-west pretty well. Um, he's not a real play driver. Uh, he's more of a supporting cast player, but he does it incredibly well. Um, whereas with Justin Carbonneau, the skill is off the charts. The skating is ridiculously good. The stick handling is ridiculous. But his decision making is a big, big issue for me. Uh, I don't have as much concern with Guité's decision making at all. Um, but Carbonneau has some decisions, especially when it comes to stick handling, where you're like, man, there are five options you could have taken instead of trying to dig through three players. So I'm, I'm looking for that to improve before I rank him above Guité. Um, for me, Gite so far has just been the more well-rounded, more reliable, more consistent player of the two. So, um, even though the point totals don't say that, I mean, Calbano has, um, I mean, he has twice the amount of points that Gite has. Gite has just been more impactful and more decisionally sound than Calbano has been. But that's our second segment done. We'll get to our third segment in just a second, uh, where we discuss uh, picks 26 through 32 and our honorable mentions. But just for a quick word from our sponsors at Indeed. We're driven by the search for better here at Locked On, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search isn't to search at all. Don't search. Match instead with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors and uh, a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates incredibly quickly. You can dish the busy work and use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging all in one place so you can connect with candidates faster and more efficiently. And it doesn't just help you hire faster. Indeed um, also uh, delivers the highest quality matches uh, compared to other job sites, going to 93% of employers uh, that were surveyed by Indeed. Um, I got my job, my day job through Indeed. I found it incredibly useful and practical. Everything happened in one spot. You don't go have to, you don't have to go to your emails and your text messages, then your calls. 
Uh, it's all in one place, and um, there's no surprises. Everything's straight up and, and right there. So listeners of the show can get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to Indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about this um, about this offer on this podcast. So Indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply, but if you need to hire, you need Indeed. Alrighty, so let's close things off here with the rest of our top 32 and uh, break down some of our honorable mentions. I don't think we're going to have time for all of that. If you want to see the whole rankings and the breakdown of our team, you can just go to EliteProspects.com or EP Rinkside and uh, look that up. Um, and the link below. And the link below. Uh, it's uh, it's locked uh, for for subscribers for subscribers only. But honestly, at this point, if you like prospects, if you're listening to the show and you don't have an EP subscription, you're doing something wrong. It's absolutely worth your money. Uh, so let's start at 26 here with Jack Murtag. I'll, I'll let you take away on him because you're a big fan of his game. And uh, the more I've watched, the more I've liked. Uh, talk me through his game. Very projectable winger, uh, just over, uh, just under six foot one, two hundred pound guy. Uh, late August, uh, 07 birthday, so young for the draft class. Wicked, wicked, wicked release, but also a lot of deception in how he shoots the puck. He's a six point five shot in our grading tool, and also a seven grade physical player. He is an absolute wrecking ball. He searches for violence. Uh, Whenever he's on the ice, whether the puck is on a stick or he's playing defense, it doesn't matter. He wants to initiate contact. He's intelligent. He reads the play well um, and brings a lot of what you look for in a potential like third line piece. If you're drafting between 20th and 32nd overall in the later half of the first round, uh, will also bring a decent amount of upside as a potential second line complimentary guy uh, who can finish off chances, uh, be your F1, win puck battles, and uh, just give us all every single shift. You know what to expect from him next we have cole reshney a five foot ten 187 pound centerman from the whl who've been playing with the victoria royals uh and there he scored seven points through six games so far this season he's a really good passer a really intelligent player and overall a guy that definitely has a lot of room to grow into his toolkit this season then we've got two defensemen that, that you can uh, talk to us about with Dakota Rayo Mullen at 28th overall and Reese Hamilton of the Calgary Hitmen at 29th. Yeah, they're pretty similar profiles. Incredible skaters. Uh, Leo Mullen's a six foot uh, left shot defenseman. Reese Hamilton's a six foot one left shot defenseman as well. Um, both great skaters, but not high end thinkers. I'd say that Leo Mullen's probably the be the better thinker of the two. Hamilton has some issues when it comes to decision making, breakout passes, that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, he's less physically inclined than Rio Mullen is, uh, less physical tools to work with there. Uh, Rio Mullen's the more defensively sound of the two, but Reese Hamilton, the, the fun thing is the runway with him. He can develop a rush defending game that becomes a better of the two. He can develop an offensive game that becomes a better of the two because it's not about ideas for him right now, it's about tools. He can develop the ideas and the, the, the decision-making that could come with that. He's not there right now, but between those two, I'm still leaning Dakota Rio Mullen. Uh, we're going to see him a lot this season with um, in, in the NCAA. It's going to be interesting to keep a watch on his game and how he develops. So that's my read on those two. Then at 30, we have another defenseman um, who's going to be playing in the NCAA, uh, Sasha Boumedien. Um, the, um, I mean, he's got bloodlines for sure, um, but the skating is an issue. It's a major, major issue in this game. Uh, I'd say he's the weakest skater in this top 32. But despite yeah. that, he's in the top 32. Fantastic passer. Great hockey sense on breakouts. He can still read the game in terms of rush defending and get involved in those areas. He just doesn't have the footwork to keep up with guys as they cut across him, as they kind of cut back in the offensive zone. He has some struggles keeping up with that. But when it comes to reading the game and anticipating play, he's up there with the best in this draft class. As a six foot one, 175 pound left shot defenseman, Boomy Zen's got some uh, got some areas to work on for sure, but there's promise there, especially with the passing game. He's one of the best breakout passers in this class, and he's going to be playing for a, a program we know very well for developing defensemen in uh, Boston Indeed. University. It's going to be interesting yeah. to watch. Talk with you, Carter Bear, for a second, though, who ends up at number 31 here on these rankings. He's another prospect that I hadn't watched before Mitch brought him up, and I watched him after and was really impressive that I watched. Absolutely. The last two players in this top 32 are very similar frames. They're both six foot uh, and just about like 180 pound left wingers, but they couldn't be more different in style. 
Carter Bear is just an absolute wrecking ball. He's incredibly gr gritty and intense. He looks to initiate contact uh, everywhere on the ice. He's a tremendously hard worker, a uh, really solid defensive player as well. And he's off to a flying start with Everett in the dub uh, so far with four goals and eight points through five games. The skill is definitely something where there's still some runway to improve on, but he's definitely off to a very promising start this season. Then we've got Benjamin Kivon uh, from the USHL with the Des Moines Buccaneers. And he, despite having the same frame as uh, Carter Bear, he is the, the exact opposite. He's a tremendous skater, one of the best ones in uh, among forwards in this first round. Um, and he's really dynamic in terms of his skill. He constantly pushes the pace. And that combination of skill, dynamism, pace, and uh, mobility and speed is a really deadly one at the USHL level. He's a really good puck handler, really intelligent offensive creator uh, and he already has four points uh, through his first three games of the season had a little bit of an injury uh, about a week into the season but he's recovered from that quickly and he's going to be the go-to guy in Des Moines also the highest scorer from the USHL that was returning from last season so obviously based of the entire league of stars has graduated to the NCAA ranks but uh, Kivon is, is still sticking around this year and he's going to make some damage and also contend for the yeah. highest scorer of the league but that wraps up the top 32, but let's do a little quick fire for our honorable mentions. We're not going to go in depth. Uh, we're going to have a lot of time this year to analyze these prospects, but just to name off some names, we've got dynamic, undersized, highly intense centerman and Adam Banak uh, from the Youngstown Phantoms in the USHL. We've got uh, Alex Huang and Bill Zonon from the QMJHL from your region. Huang's yep. a mobile defenseman. Zonon's a really physical and physically gifted uh, left winger. Charlie Treadway is a toolsy but still extremely raw right shot defenseman from the NTDP. Colin Potter's an undersized uh, forward who's been playing with Arizona State University this season. And we got a lot of other names in here, Hattie, if you want to uh, finish off the quick fire here with the young. Yeah, just a quick shout out. Just a quick shout out here to Luka Radovojevic, who could have been in the first round. Uh, very interesting prospect here. Um, also, a uh, quick shout out to two more QMJHLers. You got four QMJHLers in the in the honorable mentions list. That's amazing. Uh, Nathan Quinn and Owen Conrad, who, who we just talked about this uh, this week, uh, ama a couple of amazing prospects that are more than deserving to be in this HM's list. But that wraps things up for today's show. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, remember to like and subscribe. Leave us a comment letting us know what you want us to talk about next. And if you're listening on your favorite podcasting platform, please leave us a rating review and make sure to make us your first listen of the day. For a second listen of the day, make sure to check out Locked on Sports today. They've got all your news and updates about what's going on around sports in the sporting world. Overall, not just hockey, football, baseball, basketball, you name it. And also, make sure to check out the EP rankings on uh, on EP Rinkside as well. It's well worth your money. Um, the subscription gets you perks. It gets you search engines. It gets you all the premium tools you get through EP. And you get a free draft guide at the end of the year uh, if you take a yearly subscription. So it's absolutely worth your time. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all. That's it for today's episode. This has been Hattie Kalakesh with Sebastian High, and we hope we tune in next time.